So this is a non-Muslim professor. He's a professor of Arabic studies in Italy, in Rome. In Roma, in Rome, yeah. In Rome, and he saw the my first interview with you. Apparently, yes. where we talked about maqamat, yep. and he yep. became super interested. And now he's he actually finished he the finished the entire eight maqams, and he recited with all of them. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim And we went to the Fajr prayer and this brother, I still remember his name, Brother Saif. I still, I don't know where he is and who he is still. But I, I remember he led the prayer and he recited. I didn't know much Quran at all. And he, re, he was an Iraqi fellow. And he recited Surat Qaf. I didn't know it's Surat Qaf at the time. I didn't know. I didn't even read Quran properly at the time, and he recited Surat Qaf. And I remember crying my heart out in Fajr, not knowing what he's saying. There is uh, Ramadan is coming, inshallah, and a lot of Qurra they have problem with their throat, with their nose. Mm. They have a lot of issues there, yeah. and they don't know the solution for it. So Many a lot of the sessions, my recitation was a train wreck. Also, because I have really bad sinuses. Okay. Okay. So this is a little. Sheikh Naba, I fixed this. Okay. With months. Searching about things to help any Qari if it ta- if he takes it, Alhamdulillah, gonna fix his problem like ninety percent. Awesome, inshallah. Qari Maker, powered by Maqamat Institute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi taala wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. It was uh, an amazing eight <laughs> Maqamat journey that we had together. Um, this session is dedicated to actually highlighting the effort that the Sheikh is making, Maqamat Institute, no. and its objectives. Because I think everybody listening should be familiar with this resource. Uh, and I'll share also my thoughts uh, at the end of why I think this is so important, inshallah. But Sheikh, tell us a little bit about the, the, the different audiences you're trying mm. to benefit from the no. Maqamat Institute. Uh, alhamdulillah, we started like one year ago. Okay. Uh, and uh, I was like... Um, I had aim to reach to three kind of audience. Okay. The first audience, which those who are making hev, those who are memorizing Al-Quran right. or understanding Al-Quran, making right. tafsir, listening to tafsir. Right. Uh, um, I advise everyone to start his journey with maqamat. Do not wait until you finish the Quran, then you come to learn the maqamat. You're just going to you know, waste your time. I feel like what you're saying is so important also because when somebody's memorizing the Quran, they're yeah. repeating a lot. Yes. And if they're practicing their maqamat at the time, they're every time they're repeating, they're improving themselves as they go. You're going to have two birds with one stool. Right, right. That's yeah, amazing. That's yeah. the first audience. Alhamdulillah, we have a lot of uh, huffab. Now, inshallah, alhamdulillah, our ma'ahad has more than 300 uh, students. Mashallah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, a big shariha. My dua for it is uh, uh, 3 million or more. <laughs> ya Rabbi, inshallah. inshallah. We try to reach to everyone wants to learn al-maqamat and beautify his or her voice in all over the world. That's our purpose. That's inshallah. awesome. Ta'ala. But that's the first audience. Right. The second one, those who already huffab, alhamdulillah. Right. And they wanted to lead salawat, they wanted to lead taraweeh. We're going to Ramadan, open the doors yani now. Right. They have to start the journey from now. Every single session, they're going to take it. It benefits them and make their voice more better. And they can even uh, have the technique of the imam. I have the whole chapter. It talks about how to use the mic, how to stand, how to start the maqam in takbirat al-ihram. Because many people, they know the maqamat when they go to pray. When they say Allahu Akbar, they say Allah Akbar with different maqam than which they uh, intend to recite. Then the maqam just goes. But how to even start your salah with the maqam? Yeah, yeah. Like even I, mean, I don't, I'm not knowledgeable in maqamat except for no. with the brief exposure I've had. But I've led the prayer many times, and depending on how you start your prayer, even yeah. if you had something in your head, it doesn't come out that way. Yep. For how, how to start? Yeah. How to stand? How to use the mics? It's almost like tuning your instrument. Tune. <laughs> nah. Yeah. For, this is the second audience. And yeah. Alhamdulillah, we have imams from everywhere, uh, even uh, some imams from Al Haram. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Uh, Mashallah. Mashallah. I don't like Allah to mention Allah names. Allah. 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 He is learning, and he finished now, the whole entire maqams. So and this is a non-Muslim Muslim professor. He's a yes. professor of Arabic studies in Italy, in Rome, in you Roma. said? In Rome, yeah. In Rome, and he saw the my first interview with you, apparently, yes. where we talked about maqamat, yep. and he yep. became super interested, and now he's he actually... Finished he finished the finished. Whole entire eight maqams, and he recited with all of them. 
We're gonna even put like one minute or something. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll show you this clip in this video of him reciting. It's incredible. Uh, with us now, Michael from Italy. Uh, how are you, Michael? Fine, alhamdulillah, ya shaykh. Can you tell just people about your story in half a minute? Okay. I studied uh, in the past, I studied uh, Arabic language. Uh, I am Italian, 100% uh, uh, Italian. <laughs> now we learn it um, many maqams, but now I'm going to ask you about to read with different maqams to show people that, alhamdulillah, we have an Italian uh, professor. Uh, he is uh, learning maqamat. Uh, but alhamdulillah now after he learned it with us in Maqamat Institute now ta'ala, he will recite with many different melodies and this is my happiness today uh, let me listen to you Sheikh uh, Michael from uh, Maqam An-Nahawand can you recite from Maqam An-Nahawand something? Naam. 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 after we spend hours for learning Maqamat now you read inshallah Naam. Naam. go ahead Sheikh Bismillah Naam. Naam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين so it's a gateway to that I, I would add a couple of audiences you know what he did also after that yeah he went to his students and he started talking with them about uh, maqamat. Fanta, you talk literally about non-Muslim, non-Arab, non-whatever. Yeah. They don't care about Islam. They now start listening to maqams. And definitely they're going to love it. Then definitely they're going to love the Quran. Yeah. It's like a, a sabab. Why is this? What's this beautiful sound? What does it mean? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That's, that's the main purpose for me that's with so this uh, institute. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> That it reminds me of There's not no. one way to Allah, Allah. Like There's multiple pathways, right? So, no. so I would add a couple of audiences That I think can benefit from your institute Inshallah. One audience I think definitely is Young activists, khatibs You know, students that are giving khutbah in university Or, you know, people that, that volunteer And give khutbah in different masajid You end up leading the prayer, right? And if you're, if you're leading the prayer in a beautiful way That actually is you know, uh, it's 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 the final impact you leave as the prayer comes to an end, right? So the fact that people experienced a beautiful prayer resonates and everything you try to give as a message in the khutbah actually sticks better. So I think that's really important, uh, an audience. But also many parents around the world that want their children to learn to recite the Qur'an, even if they're not making them hufaz of the Qur'an, they want them to recite the Qur'an. The problem is you get some qari to get you your kid to recite the Qur'an, but they don't like it. And they don't like it because they don't see any enjoyment in it. But if this becomes, you know, pardon the language, but it becomes divine music for them with the ahkam of tajweed. It's, it's actually the rhythm, the beauty that Allah intends for people to experience with the Qur'an. If a, if a child develops that connection to the Qur'an, no. then I think... You won't have to push for an emotional connection to the Quran's recitation with maqamat. They can actually learn to just, they're just driving in the car to school. They're just reciting, you know, bayati or hijaz or, you know, rust. And they're like, hey, mom, I'm going to do rust today. And they're yeah. reciting surah al-mulk or something, you know, that, that because now it's become something that they find joy in. And I think so for parents that are that have already taught their kids or are teaching their children how to read the Quran, the alif ba, the, the flow in reading, if you can make that rhythmic and enjoyable for your children, then I think this is, especially the older kids, you know, 12 and older, I think, uh, they can really pick this up uh, and benefit from it. So I think there are lots of audiences. Of course, non-Muslims, like you said, yeah, well, sure. are, no. you know, an unlikely audience, but still an audience, uh, you know, for this work. So the reason I, I, I wanted to con kind of conclude this session with just some thoughts on why I think uh, beautifying the Quran is so important. Uh, and I said some of these things in the opening session, but I just want to add a couple of really quick observations about the, the recitation of the Qur'an. 
I was in university. I went to a co- convention when I was in college, uh, the Muslim Students Association convention, and I did not know any Arabic at the time, right? And we went to the Fajr prayer, and this brother, I still remember his name, Brother Saif. I still, I don't know where he is and who he is still. But I, I remember he led the prayer, and he recited. I didn't know much Quran at all, and he, re- he was an Iraqi fellow. And he recited Surat Qaf. I didn't know it's Surat Qaf at the time. I didn't know, I didn't even read Quran properly at the time. And he recited Surat Qaf. And I remember crying my heart out in Fajr, not knowing what he's saying. And it's not even like social crying, like the guy next to me is crying, so I'm like, okay, I'll cry too. No, no, no. It's the the word of Allah was just, it was doing something to me because of the beautiful, magnanimous way in which he was reciting the ayat. And I had to find out. And then I, there was a big crowd, I couldn't find him. So I asked, do you know what surah he was reciting? Do you know what surah he was reciting? Do you know what surah? Like, I needed to know what is it that he was reciting. And that got me reading the translation of Surat Qaf. And it got me curious about reading translations to begin with. Like, I was already heading towards Islam, but like the real Quran curiosity, one of the pivotal moments in my memory is actually listening to powerful recitation of the Quran. So I don't think we should undermine the power of this, the power of just the sound of the Quran echoing in the world. We're we're a fifth of the world's population. Imagine if, you know, men, women are reciting Quran. Like sometimes I'm listening to Quran in the car, I'm getting gas. This actually happened to me. I was getting gas, I was listening to a recitation of Quran. I was listening to Muhammad Siddiq al Minshawi. Right? And this guy next to me getting gas, he goes, hey man, what is that? What song is that? Can I get that? And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll show you. What's he saying? And then we had a conversation about Surah Al-Asr because he, he just heard the recitation of the Quran. Your wife, you told me. Your, yeah. your mom has a... Alhamdulillah, from my dad, it was the same thing, Sheikh. It's like a circle. You recite, someone listened to you, he got admired the recitation. This admiring brings something bigger. Then you have kids. Then Noura, and my daughter now is Noura. Inshallah, she has talent. I can tell. She has two years old. Mashallah. Yeah, in the future, definitely, Inshallah, I'm going to uh, teach her something. Then she going to teach. Uh, it's like this, Sheikh. It's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You well, Hadid, call to we Allah. Already, my wife and I already agreed. Hadid is your student, my baby. Oh, Inshallah. He's six months old now, but I'm prepping him right now. <laughs> I already. promise you, Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's that's what I think is, is, is so powerful and beautiful about this. And it's... These, these are aspects of our identity that preserve a heritage. There are cultures that are thousands of years old and they still sing the same folk songs from their ancestors, right? Or they play the same instruments. What is the instrument of our ancestors and the heritage of Islam that went from, you mentioned Rast, Nahawand, Ajam. There, there's multiple maqamat that have nothing to do with the Arabs. And, and they, they, they went all over the place and then can connect it to the Qur'an. So this Qur'an is actually, and its beautiful recitation is our heritage. And it is a part of preserving our identity. I'm telling you, I was telling you before, like, my, I, when I, went, to, I went to Pakistan recently, and I saw that the quality of Urdu declined. So even though I'm, I've lived in America, in my pretty much my teen life and older, they told me I have old person Urdu. And I heard young people speaking and half the language they were speaking was English. Every other word, and even Urdu sentences was English. The same thing in the Arab world. The yeah. youth are you, in, incorporating French and English uh, you know, into, into the Arabic language, right? What does this look like 30 years from now? What does this look like 40 years from now? Like, just think about that, right? The cultures are being erased. Their language and their heritage is being erased. And the only thing that can restore them is something powerful enough that gives you a reason to stay connected. Nothing is more powerful than the Qur'an. Every part of the Qur'an is powerful. It's recitation, it's memorization, it's tajweed, it's meaning, it's, it's tafsir, it's da'wah. Every aspect of the Qur'an is miraculously powerful. So to me, the only way we can turn the cultural tide is to preserve and nourish this aspect of our culture. And I'm really grateful that you took this on. I know some people are like, what's the point of, this is just beautifying the recitation, what's the point? Actually, well, this is the last thing, I don't want to talk too long, but I'll say one last thing. I was studying Sheikhna, I was studying in Australia, I was giving a dars on Surah Al-Taghabun. Yeah. And in Surah Al-Taghabun, Allah talked about, you know, خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِالْحَقِّ He created the skies and the earth with purpose. So there's purpose. But then he says, سُوَرَكُمْ 
صوركم he beautifully molded you and he molded you and he beautified the molding of you so Allah is not just talking about purpose he's also talking about beauty right so I got really interested at the time like what is the relationship between beauty and purpose hmm. so an engineer an engineer is only concerned with purpose right the machine should work right wrong some of the greatest engineers in the history of the world like the the greatest aeronautics engineers car engineers mechanical engineers right you know what they talked about if it's beautiful it's got purpose actually some of the the most successful aircrafts in the military in commercial aircraft the designers of them said beauty is purpose they, they saw this they understood this and purpose is beauty what did allah do in the quran he gave allah could have just told us allah is one There's an afterlife. This is the Prophet. This is the Quran. How many times did he repeat that? Like, ilahukum ilahun wahid or khalaqa samawati wal ard or over and over again. Why? Why? Because every time he repeats it, he repeats it with a new beauty. Because if it's just purpose, you can fit the message of the Meccan Quran on one page. <laughs> This is the ma'lumat, the essential knowledge, what you need. Believe in prophets, believe in Allah, believe in the afterlife. You can fit that on two, three pages. The stories of the prophets are not that detailed. You can fit them. But Allah beautified the message. And Allah beautified the recitation of that message. You know what that means? And he, when He created us, He didn't just create us functional. Our faces, our hands, our legs, our, our limbs, they didn't have to look beautiful. They just had to be functional. By the way, a spider is also functional. right a crocodile is also functional they also they're, they're, they have function right so we could have looked like that but allah created us beautifully so in fact highlight acknowledging the beauty of the quran and celebrating the beauty of the quran part of what what, what you're doing is it's to me it's so fundamental it's actually one of the purposes of the quran it's not an extracurricular activity it is a fundamental component of experiencing the quran because allah doesn't just want purpose in this world he also wants beauty i'll give you one last example of that comes from surah ar-rahman the same surah in which he says allama al-quran you know when he says wa nakhlu dhatu al-akmam no okay a horse eats okay a horse eats hay on the ground right and it has what it needs the cow eats the grass it has what it needs human beings needed carbs fats proteins water he could have made it so ugly by the way uh, insects have proteins too cockroaches have proteins in them too right mosquitoes have them in them too you can get carbs and proteins and fats from barks of trees and and and, and leaves that tastes terrible but allah said he he gave you fruit and then he packaged it beautifully dhatul akmam subhanallah so why why Actually, in the hospital, when somebody can't eat, they put a drip in them, or they give them hospital food. It tastes terrible, but it's nutrition that they need, right? So Allah didn't create this world just with purpose. Allah, Allah created beauty. this world with purpose and beauty. Allah. Everything about it. We want to eat something beautiful. We want to taste something beautiful. We want to hear something beautiful. We want to see something beautiful. We want to experience something beautiful. We want to go somewhere beautiful. Our entire life is driven by beauty. When you buy a car, what do you think about? Only horsepower, or how does it look? When you buy these phones or whatever, if the look and feel, you know, the, the the design department is actually as important as the engineering department. The most successful software companies, if uh, Windows or uh, you know iOS, these big manufacturers, if they didn't design their product beautifully, we wouldn't buy it. So, yeah. We would not buy it. You know, software engineers make really ugly apps. They have to have an entire design, and nobody will download it. Nobody will use it because it's ugly. right so the and the most beautiful thing human beings have in their possession that allah has allowed them to access is allah's own words then imagine the weight of beautifying the word of allah imagine the weight of celebrating and bringing out that beauty so i'm really grateful to you for, for what you're, what you're doing and may allah azza wa jalla just make us of the people that fulfill the purpose of allah's book and acknowledge and spread the beauty of allah's book both together Thank you so very جزيل. much. I just left a gift for you. Yes, tell me. I'm also advising every Qari. See, there is uh, Ramadan is coming, inshallah, and a lot of Qurra, they have problem with their throat, with their nose. Mm. They have a lot of issues there. Yeah. And they don't know the solution for it. So Many a lot of the sessions, my recitation was a train wreck. Also, 
Because I have really bad sinuses. Okay. Okay, so this is what a little Sheikh bit. Naba, I fixed this. Okay. With months searching about things to help any Qari if it ta- if he takes it, Alhamdulillah, gonna fix his problem like 90%. Awesome. Inshallah. And I call it like Qari uh, Care, care pack. pack. Yeah. Uh, it has uh, a humidifier. Okay. This one. Just inshallah, gift for you, Sheikh. Which camera? This one? Yeah. This one fixes the problem of humidity. Because every qari needs kind of humid air right. to fix the problem of the nose the, and the passage, problem of yeah. the throat. Yeah. If, uh, a lot of areas are so dry, then the qari who Texas lives in Texas or lives in Egypt, in Morocco, or even here in America and many uh, states, he's going to yeah. suffer, I'm right. telling you. Right. For this one, it fixes the problem of the humidity. Okay. Then I have also another thing. It's called a razor rinse that for the nose. It goes and clean the nose and clean even al jubil and fiya. The, okay. the nose's pockets here. Then we have also some ashab like ginseng and these uh, things, mm. which also fixes the yeah. thing. All of that in the, uh, the you know, uh, yeah, and just the qari can take it. If uh, everyone wants uh, to have it, it's on uh, our website. Oh, that's great. Inshallah. So then you don't have to go shopping around for it. Also yeah. support the organization. Get a care uh, pack for yourself. I brought this for you, Sheikh. Yes. Inshallah, gonna help a lot. That's time. awesome. Alhamdulillah. Ironically, I was literally going to go buy a humidifier today. Oh, what's I got it as a gift. What's for Hadid. For Hadid, yeah. <laughs> now I realize it was for myself and Hadid. Inshallah. Inshallah. Khair. I love you so, so much. Allah, Allah, Allah protect you and Allah, Allah bring so much khair into the ummah through you. Barakallahu alayhi wa alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. For those who want to learn different methods of a citation, for those who want to improve their voice and bring it to a higher level, for those who want to enjoy and delight both prayers and listeners with their voice, for those who want to practice, inshallah, the whole maqamat practically one-on-one with me, sign up here.